Jimmy O from Joe Blow. Anthony, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Uh, this is a wonderful film, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it really is. Thank you. How, how did you discover Mrs. Harris, and, and what was your thoughts of bringing this to the big screen? I discovered Ada Harris by accident, to be honest, um, because um, I signed with a manager in L.A. who manages the Paul Gallico estate, and um, I had been a great fan of a, of a book by Gallico called Jenny, which I still hope to adapt one of these days. But one of these days, out of the blue, he sent me a script of Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, which I'd never heard of, and I hadn't read the book. And immediately I read the script. I thought, yes, I can do this. I can do this because I grew up partly in Paris. I can do this because I can respond to this character who I think is, is absolutely wonderful and life-affirming. Yeah. And um, obviously knowing both British and French culture very well, I really thought I was qualified to direct this film. I, I clearly you were. Uh, I, I think this is a this is a marvelous uh, performance from Leslie. How 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 quickly did she get involved? Um, it wasn't quick, I have to admit, because um, it's a it's a very difficult role to cast, and it's always a balancing act between you know who is considered bankable box office wise, and who is right for the part. But I always sensed that Leslie was, was the right actress for this part. And it took fate, um, the fact that she made this film with Paul Thomas Anderson that led to her having an Oscar nomination. And suddenly her star rose sufficiently for me to be able to insist that she play this part. Nice. Now, what I loved about this film is the, the how you kind of made this such a feel-good movie and the, all these characters are so beautifully drawn and be how was the process of adapting the the book into the screenplay and what were there any challenges within that yeah the book presents a lot of challenges um i mentioned that i'd been sent a script but that script didn't get made um i ended up that the producer lost the rights and i ended up acquiring the rights which meant having to start again with a new script and I started writing and then I brought on one collaborator and then another and then another because it is a very, very challenging story to tell because Gallico gives you the bare bones of the story and he gives you the character, but he doesn't give you the layers or the depth or the characterization or the backstories that you need to make it really, really rich and enjoyable. So there was an enormous amount of work to do to dig into what the themes of the story were and bring, in, bring them into relief and bring them to the surface, as well as modernizing it to some extent without taking away any of its period and historical accuracy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of historical accuracy, you have the challenge also of creating Christian Dior and that that world that that in a time in a period piece. How was that? How was that experience? Well, that was a huge gift actually, because we were very lucky to have been um, welcomed by Christian Dior, um, who opened their doors to their archives and gave us full access so that we could study the drawings and the designs and the sketches, and also the architectural plans that enabled us to recreate the interior of the House of Dior exactly as it was. And so that was, that was huge help. But in a film that is basically magic realism, it's very important that the real elements, in this case, the true history of Christian Dior and his output, is reflected accurately, because that then is contrasted with the fairy tale and the magic. And that's where your magic realism starts to really work, because you've got elements that are absolutely true and accurate and other elements that are completely fantastical and whimsical. Yeah, well, we got to wrap, but thank you so much. It's a wonderful film, man. Thank really you. Wonderful. Thank you for your enthusiasm. It's really appreciated. No problem. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Mom's away. Mrs. Harris. 
What would I do without you? Mrs. Harris, it's the soul of discretion. One would never know she'd been, but for the polish on my knobs. That's what we are, Vi. The invisible women. Kiss me once, kiss me twice, then kiss me once again. Isn't it divine? 500 pounds. 500 quid for a dress? When I put it on, nothing else matters. My Eddie would love to see me in a Dior gown. War has been over a long time. Your Eddie's never coming back. Nothing wrong with dreaming, Eddie. That's what you are. You're a dreamer. You should have been receiving a war widow's pension. It comes quite a tidy sum. Oh, it's my Eddie. It's a sign from my angel. What are you going to do? I'm going to buy a dress. A Christian Dior from Paris. Paris. Ni se départ, ni se navire. Excuse me, dear. I'm after a frock. One of them 500 pound ones. You have the wrong dress. Please, let me escort you out. No, 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 hang on a minute. I've saved every penny scrubbing floors so I can buy this frock. Excuse me, but it would be my honor to have you view the collection as my guest. Ni tout cela, ni rien au monde. Oh, that's lovely. A Dior dress is designed to astonish. How will you do that, Mrs. Harris? You are nobody. Invisible. Madame, may I give you a lift? What was I thinking coming here? I'm just a cleaner from London. No, your cleaner dreams of the most beautiful gown in the world. It's not sewing, it's making moonlight. You dare to follow your dreams, Mrs. Harris. Bravo. This is not possible, not at all. Where are you going, Mrs. Harris? To see the boss. Mrs. Harris, these are for you, from Monsieur Le Marquis. I've spent too long on my own wishing my life away. You don't want to do the same thing. This is your chance. I have never encountered anyone like you. Come on, girls, follow me. Today, there's a new woman, a modern woman. I thought it was too late. Now, I'm not so sure. Who's that bloke? Looks the master himself, Monsieur Dior. He looks like my milkman. <laughs> <laughs>